Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I wanted to show you just a few projects that are coming out of the shop right now. Um, one is a customer request for a modified swamp uh, set, really. He wanted to utilize swamps on an upscaled Command & Colors game. And if you're not sure what that game is, you might check it out on BoardGeek.com. Uh, it is a game that involves um, a hex-based movement that utilizes uh, miniatures to simulate uh, ancient combats in this case. It's part of a series of games. Battle Cry was one of them uh, as well, which I'd played in the, quite a while back. Uh, but um, this customer was upscaling it so that he could use larger miniatures, so that he could use um, you know, more detailed figures, and he wanted to have a more detailed battlefield to play on. So he had me construct um, 16 small swamps that fit within a 5-inch hex base. Uh, the customer was not specific that I had to match the 5-inch hex exactly, so these were just cut to approximately fit within a 5-inch hex uh, spacing. And uh, I'll show you those up close, as well as a um, recently completed um, small chapel ruins. And the small chapel ruins has gotten a few uh, upgrades since the last one I produced, and so I wanted to give you a chance to take a look at that. So here you see a, a sampling of the swamp pieces. Uh, the swamps, as I said, uh, fit within a 5-inch hex, uh, and they were originally um, designed to be a little closer to hex shape, and then I accidentally did it more as an octagon, Say, you know, study my geometry a little bit better. So what I did is round them out. The customer, again, mentioned that he wasn't so concerned that they fit the hex perfectly, which would be, you know, some tight measurements and a lot of individual cuts, but said the real, that they just need to fit within it, and this fits it actually actually fairly tightly. The uh, swamps are based on a hardboard base and uh, feature an Envirotex resin and one of the nice things about doing it on the hardboard base with the low profile is that um, the Envirotex tends to wick in through capillary action into the surrounding vegetation after it's applied and that gives a really nice transition effect for the waterway to the dry areas, gives it kind of a muddy look, which uh, I think really accentuates the swamps. The, uh, then they're given, for the water effects, they're given a little top coat of Mod Podge to add just a little bit of water motion to the top. Not too much, really, as swamps don't have really, often don't have very much flowing water through them, but just enough to kind of give it, you know, that, that appearance of uh, maybe a little wind on the water or some, you know, jiggling from you know, creatures lurking below it, if you will. Uh, the uh, vegetation is the same that I use on all of my swamp pieces. And uh, one of the things I was concerned about initially was fitting bases. Now these, I, th I can't remember the exact scale that he's using for his miniatures. And one of the things uh, that I remember from playing Battlecry and seeing um, some Command and Color Ancients online is that um, the miniatures represent, uh, you have like a, a set unit of say four or six, and so they're individual models, and as the uh, units are taken uh, damage, the individual models are taken off. So you could place them in a variety of spots on the swamps, and you shouldn't have any difficulty finding something stable for them to sit on. So that gives you a little idea of how the swamps came out. And here we have a uh, close-up of the ruined chapels. Now the ruined chapels are based on her starts molds. Um, I actually assembled these and made a master mold of these pieces so that they could be cast in one piece. And one of the nice things about that is you get you know the tight seams in between all of the blocks. Although I'm working on some techniques for creating that effect even when they're individually assembled. But in any case, for this piece, you know, it's got a couple piles of small ruins around it, nothing too extreme. But one of the things that I've done with this piece that I've been really trying to work on in a variety of pieces is just trying to give a more aged effect to the stone, something that looks a little bit more authentic than just your typical dry brush, you know, multiple grays or whatever. So for this piece, and I've done this on a couple of the other ruined pieces, is I've gone in and just weathered it with a couple, you know, mossy green washes to bring out a little bit of a variety on the surface of the material of the of the uh, piece. And then for this piece in particular, I've done two new things. One is to go in with a little um, silk floor. I'm sorry, not silk floor. Scenic Express Summer Ivy. The Summer Ivy is very similar to the other ivy that I've shown you in that um, it's got individual five-lobed leaves. Let me see if I can give you a little close-up of that. You going to focus on that? Well, maybe I'm going a little too close. How's that? And uh, it's a really beautiful ivy set. 
um, and you can, you know, cut it to fit it a variety of ways. One of the things I noticed in a recent trip, I was um, traveling down to Virginia to visit some friends, is that often I see a lot of ivy-like plants grow up to the top, and then they sweep over the sides and hang in large swaths. So I decided to try to emulate that on this piece by carrying it up over that side wall, you know, from the base on the inside, and then having it start to fill out as it's, you know, getting a little more sunlight and growing a little more densely. The second thing that I added to this, and I'm not sure to be honest if I'm going to include this on every piece because these trees are really uh, pretty persnickety to assemble, but is a different style of tree. This tree is based on a different armature than I usually use. Uh, hold on a second, I'll get you the base armature. Base armature comes out looking like this. Now this base armature, as you can see, has a lot of detail in the branches. And this really affords a nice opportunity to create a much more detailed tree than some of the typical woodland scenic armatures that are available. I believe this is produced by Bachman Scenery, but I, I could be incorrect on that. If I'll try and check and see if I can put a note in the uh, uh, comments, uh, not in the comments, in the um, description down below. But uh, in any case, one of the things that I've been exploring with those trees, and I've just been dabbling with them lately, is the ability to leave a few branches unfoliaged and then you get that nice sense that there's a dead branch sticking out of the tree. Now I didn't go back in and paint these you know branches to dry brush them. that's something that could be done in the future uh, but um, you know it just gives a very nice sense that you know a tree where a branch has sort of died out you can leave that branch exposed and it doesn't look out of place or lacking in detail compared to the rest of the tree. So that was something I thought I'd, I'd just dress up this little piece here. I wanted to give it something a little bit more a little bit more pizzazz than I have in the past. Uh, just because it's small doesn't mean it can't look detailed and beautiful. At least that's the way I feel. So I wanted to give it something to jazz, jazz it up just a little bit. So thanks for taking a look at these pieces with me today. I hope you enjoyed them, maybe found something that you can use for your own terrain. Uh, if you want to see any close-up pictures of these, you can always go to terrenscapes.com. Uh, there there'll be photos already posted, and I'll put a link down below in the description so that you can follow those a little bit more easily. And uh, I just want to thank all the viewers and all the people who take the time to put comments down below. I find it really motivating and, and, uh, and very gratifying to know that for some people I'm able to inspire them, give them some ideas on how they can improve their terrain. And I just want to encourage you to use the comment section down below if you have questions. If you want to contact me directly about work, um, contracting for a project, or any other questions that you might have, you can always email me at terrencegapes.com. And uh, hopefully you'll keep an eye on the channel. I've got a couple more videos coming out real soon.